This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Chambers, the CEO of Acuity Risk Management for a special feature on Acuity and the business model. Thank you very much for joining us today, Kerry. How are you doing? Yeah, great. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for inviting me. Good to see you again. Indeed. No, it's good to be doing this. We get a bit more of an understanding of the market for risk and, of course, the, the problems that Stream addresses and, of course, that important SaaS software as a service business model. But first of all, some news. This happens at the time uh, today uh, on a contract win. So I believe you've won uh, a three-year contract worth £85,000 and you say it's for a multinational telecoms business. So, I mean, would you like to make a, a comment on that, first of all? Yeah, we're really excited about this new contract. It is a, a recognised brand in the telecoms market. They've uh, primarily picked Stream to help with compliance for their information security requirements. So ISO 27001 or NIST 800, um, what they had been using previously, previously was spreadsheets. So it's a step up from that. They also had some legacy software. Um, so what we offer them, I guess, in terms of the challenges they were facing and the solution is really real time. So live management of their sort of complex IT security issues and the risk management of those. Uh, and But also one of the key things they wanted was the ability to report really quickly and accurately to their board. And that was key and Stream will be the cornerstone of delivering that. Okay, excellent. Well, I could just ask another question on that. So it's a three-year contract. Is that £85,000 over the three years, effectively? So this is um, phase one. So phase one will be worth to us £85,000 over the three years. But okay. the expectation is that that will now multiply as we get phase one implemented. Okay, okay. And I wonder if you can explain, explain any more detail on phase one. Is it a trial period or...? It, it, no, because they because, so they have signed up for a subscription. So I, I will talk about the SaaS model later, but it's mm. a subscription model, subscription model uh, with a three year term. Uh, but we started with what we call phase one. So a certain set of requirements for this particular phase one, we're looking at the framework for ISO 27001. And then the intention is once that's implemented, so probably in about three months time, okay. we will then uh, bring the NIST framework into that and then expand that out to other teams. And so by the time we get round to the annual um, mark, that should have, that that annual spend with us should have increased significantly. Okay. So it's almost like a, a ramp up, mm -hmm. so to speak, yeah. or scaled, yeah. a scaled deployment of, of, of the software. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that's good. So um, presumably you're quite pleased with that. Obviously a contract win is always there. Uh... Yeah. It's a nice. great logo and a great logo to be associated with. So we're really, really pleased. Uh, and okay. the customer seems extremely happy. So looking forward to working with them. Okay, fantastic. Well, let's talk a bit about then the, the market for, for risk. Or let's say that the problems, uh, the problem that is risk management and, of course, the solution that Stream delivers. Could you talk a little bit about some of the uh, the, 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 well, the risk problems in the market? You, you mentioned earlier there about this company particularly using spreadsheets which is you know very um one might say it's very old school but i think i get the feeling a lot of companies big companies are still using uh spreadsheet type uh, yeah. systems for their risk management um yeah. but if we, if we if we to talk a little bit about um the, the market for risk i mean what are we talking about here really what's the opportunity what sort of risks would certain entities companies governments etc be wanting to try and mitigate yeah okay so we work in the GRC space, so that's governance, risk and compliance. Um, and so this is uh, governments and other organisations uh, wanting to be able to protect uh, all of their assets and data within the organisation. So you can you can split risk or assurance of risk uh, into different sort of pillars. So you'll have, there's cyber risk. So we do particularly well with cyber risk. So that's IT security risk. So the customer that I was just talking about before, they're, they're looking at information security and IT security, uh, and that's one area. But there's other areas of, of risk as well. So there'll be like non-financial operational risk. So looking at the operations of the business and any risk that might be um, 
relevant to the operation side of the business. Mm -hmm. There could be a vendor risk or you hear it called supply chain risk. So management of those vendors, ensuring that those vendors um, have considered the same types of compliance requirements that you have considered and, um, you know, and uh, are adhering to those. So that's supply chain risk. Uh, there's data privacy. So we all know about GDPR. So privacy and the risk that's associated with that. There's business resilience, uh, enterprise risk management. So anything where you need to consider what the risk is to the organization, Stream can help organizations to centralize that and get a view across the organization of either different areas of risk or a complete view of risk across the organization. So if you're a CEO, you're, want, you're going to want to have a transparent view of how all areas of the business are operating and the platform mm. like Stream allows them to centralize that and see that. So it's any risk that could be associated with, with any business, whether it's yeah, cyber security in terms of hacking, which is a, a big thing these days, or just the yeah. actual operations of a business. What's the likelihood that snow is going to affect the roads to stop my transport vehicles getting out? That kind of that kind of thing. Exactly. Anything that needs to be considered as part of the operation of the business and is a risk to the business can be mm. managed um within the stream platform with controls applied to it and assets associated to that okay and if do you have an idea of the sort of market size uh, that we could be talking about here of course uh, people like <clears> to know that you know the size of the opportunity that's perhaps out there yeah so it's a it's it's a big market and it's mm. growing so um one statistics a statistic that we use is from came from markets and markets so um, the market in 2022 was sized at 15 billion uh, and predicted to rise to 27 billion dollars in 2027. So there's a huge opportunity in terms of governance, risk, and compliance, and you know we're right in the centre of that. Okay, and then in terms of perhaps uh, the risk to companies if they don't take risk seriously, I mean it could be presumably quite a a big problem for them i mean one they could be held hostage to they could have loss of business they could have insurance claims or you know uh, claims coming after them from the courts the european union for example if they fail to do things properly i mean how have yeah. you got any examples perhaps of of companies that have had a major problem or a major loss with, with not taking risk seriously or having the correct procedures in place yeah i mean I mean weekly you'll find uh you know organizations are um having to make statements about cyber attacks that they may have had so people trying to attack the organization mm. um through their it systems again but again you know it could be operational risk but the fines um so there's fines uh that are uh, applied from either legislation uh through legislation so it could be you know non-compliance with government regulations but also regulatory bodies also have their own fines that they may apply to organizations for not being compliant so um you know that you'll see thing you'll see jp morgan recently had something in terms of using allowing um allowing their staff to use their own mobile devices uh and were conducting conversations about client accounts on their on whatsapp on their own mobile devices and whilst they were uh felt that those were encrypted uh jp morgan ended up with a fine of i think it was 200 million dollars because they didn't look at the risk of using unsecured mobile mm. devices uh but you know so so but there are uh, there are different examples of that can happen sort of very frequently in terms of threats it's not really you're not using risk management platforms you're not going to eradicate risk from an organization yeah. so if we talk about cyber risk um, of which those mobile device devices for jp morgan would have fallen under and operational risk um you can't get rid of that risk but what you can do is understand what that exposure how exposed you are as a business if you are to continue using mm. that um, strategy is your control and mm. if you don't change it what the you know what the exposure will be for the business mm -hmm. and of course there's not just the financial cost presumably you know if it's a recognized reputation. brand exactly yeah so the reputational risk of finding yourself exposed to these types of incidents you know it often outweighs the actual financial mm. yeah. penalty that might be applied to you from your regulator or your legislator uh, but the reputational damage, you know, can go on for much longer 
um, and costs the organisation a lot more. Mm. And is it fair to say that organisations are taking this seriously or do you think there's still some education to be had? Do you think people are, are dismissing it too easily or are, are organisations generally taking it pretty seriously? No, I, I think that organisations are generally, you know, genuinely taking this very seriously. But however, okay. um, you know, the pandemic, has, since the pandemic, we've seen an acceleration in organisations moving this up the agenda of the organi- of their organisations. So pre-pandemic, uh, risk management would probably have been quite siloed along with business. So you mm-hmm. wouldn't have found probably an information security officer sitting at board level or just be board, just below board level. But you see that much more frequently now, uh, you know, in in the situation with the pandemic, almost overnight, people found themselves having to, businesses found themselves having to operate remotely, um, but be able to maintain their revenue streams. And, you know, um, quite quickly, organizations found that, you know, their business resilience plan was quite wanting, that how they would respond to that was quite wanting. And so um, they rather than having things siloed, or uh, enterprise risks has come together under one umbrella. Excuse me. Uh, and it's it's having much more of an impact in the organization as a whole rather than keeping it quite mm. modular and siloed. Um, but but organizations have, you know, they would consider quite successfully been doing this on spreadsheets for many years, you know, putting mm. their different risk registers onto different spreadsheets. Um, my sorry, apologies, Mark, but <clears throat> using a platform like Stream allows them now to centralize all of that. So they haven't got multiple versions of spreadsheets that attracts human error, that attracts corruption, that attracts, um, you know, doesn't provide that real-time information. Um, Spreadsheets are good, um, you know, as a starting point, but as a business matures, they really should be moving to something that is much more defensible, that is auditable, and that operates in real time, because the penalties are so large in terms of financial and reputational damage, if you're not able to be able Mm. to demonstrate that you've considered the controls and risk the Mm. controls against the risks that you have as a business Mm. well let's talk about stream then and obviously the 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 solution to the uh, the risk management problem we've mentioned a few points there but what makes stream special i don't want you to necessarily go through Mm. you know a user a user guide of of stream but if you maybe to make a a bit of a sales pitch or something that you might do to your client on on stream you know i'm getting getting the impression that it can take multiple inputs it can give you a full holistic view you can stage it or scale it up but what 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 are the main kind of key features and selling points of stream and and how it addresses the problem of risk but also streamlines the process of an organization yeah so uh, obviously we've touched on how it's centralizing collating all of that data um, and, and it has this really powerful analytics engine in the back of it. So uh, not only can uh, customers get that um, qualitative data, they can also quantify the risk. So they can understand how much not having controls in place will affect you know, their business if they don't make that investment. Mm-hmm. Um, it can automate workflows. So it will provide them with um, alerts and reports rather than having to remember to get those things done or remember that audits you know, are coming up and things, it can automate responses to them. So it automates a lot of the administration side of risk management. In terms of stream itself and why we do so well with our, you know, in terms of our customers, it is highly configurable. So those unique um, risk spreadsheets that organizations may have been using can be configured within our application. Um, in terms of seeing value, um, the rapid deployment that we have in terms of our implementation teams, it typically is kind of four to six weeks before uh, a customer can be up and running using Stream uh, and other suppliers in the markets could take, you know, a year to 18 months, often, you know, upwards of that as well to have a system deployed. So they can see real value very quickly with Stream. You'll find, you know, lots of risk specialists may have created their spreadsheets that they're reluctant to let go of. Mm. But the beauty of Stream is that it has all of that intelligence in the back of it and it's highly configurable. So if they have a particular way of um, looking at the frequency of risks with the likelihood of those risks happening, they can set that all up in Stream so they don't have to lo- lose the complexity of their spreadsheets, but they get a much more robust system and support in terms of looking after that. 
with other suppliers in the market if they are looking for um, something to manage cyber risk and then they move into operational risk, they'll find it hard, even though it's the same supplier, to get a complete view across cyber risk and operational risk. Whereas with um, Stream, it's just one singular platform. So as they bring on additional use cases of risk within the business, they will be able to get that clear and transparent view. It's not siloed. Um, We can deploy either with SaaS, so in the cloud, or we can deploy on-premise, which helps our customers that have got those additional security requirements if they're in defense or so on. Um, You know, and the customer's really like the support that we provide with Stream. So we pride ourselves with the sort of sub- subject matter expertise that we have within the business to be able to provide that sort of best practice, trusted guidance to our customers. And our customers really, you know, really react well to that. I wonder if I can, uh, we can talk a little bit about the SaaS business Sorry, model Mark. then. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's fine. The the SaaS business model, um, because of course, a lot of companies <laughs> are going down that software as a service uh, route, aren't they? Um, I know that from a creative software point of view, it gives companies the, the sort of assurance that they know what's coming uh, monthly. Um, you've got constant updates, yep. you've got constant support there for you. So those are just a few benefits. But I wonder if you could first of all, perhaps just explain some of the benefits of a SaaS business model. And then we can maybe talk a little bit more about uh, specifically how you're applying that to Acuity and the business model that you're following. Yeah, so with a SaaS business model, the customer buys the service from us. So they, you know, they mm. log in via the browser. We help them with the implementation so that, that it's set up and, you know, relevant to their business. Mm-hmm. But then it's it's subscription-based. So they log in as they need to use it throughout the year. Uh, any They don't have to worry about hardware requirements in the background, you know, so they don't have to buy servers for this to run on. They don't have to worry about maintaining it, you know, applying patches and fixes. That's all done from us because we deliver the service via the cloud um so it's really kind of plug and play you know and so mm. in, in various different and t- it's not a capital expenditure or anything like that there's nothing required it's just an operational expenditure for business businesses uh and they know that you know the features are going features are going to be updated they're going to be there uh, you know tested uh and mm. released mm. onto the system for them uh, without them having to do any kind of testing themselves Indeed. Yeah. Okay. And then what about the business model that Acuity are following then with how, you know, how, what, how it's structured? Is it a monthly mm-hmm. fee? Do you want to sign companies on month by month or, you know, are you going for sort of yearly or, or multiple yeah. contracts? And then of course there might be some, mm-hmm. I don't know if there's any upfront costs in terms of consulting or actually installing. So yeah. what, what, what is the business model that Acuity are, are, are offering? So for us, it's much more predictable to be able to operate with a SaaS business model. Um, so we sell um, three-year contracts. So we sell three-year okay. con- um, subscriptions. So a customer will sign a contract with us and they pay annually in advance. So they pay annual subscriptions uh, and they're tied into that contract for three years. So we know that once they've signed, you know, signed their first annual, um, sign their first contract, we will get repeat revenue, forward contracted revenue for the coming two years beyond that. Um, so it helps us in terms of being able to look at run rates. So what we want to be able to see as that breakdown, as that breaks down over the months is that is those run rates going up because okay. that means that we're either upselling within the customer or bringing on new business. Um, and, and we can see um, we can it can be much more predictable, I guess, with that SAS model because you know what's coming for those three years mm, yeah indeed and what's the plan then i mean you are the ceo <clears throat> of acuity so what 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 is the the business plan um to to grow the company to to get out there and get new sales and to effectively yeah make the business profitable and, and grow it yeah so we're you know we've got quite um aggressive um targets internally okay. in terms of where we want to see the business um so obviously we had the transaction earlier this year um, where we moved to the PLC, and mm-hmm. so we've set ourselves um, quite aggressive targets for the next three years. But we see them as very achievable. Um, we, I think, we've spoken about this on on interviews with you before, Mark. That we're focusing on the US. So the US is forty five percent of the global GRC market, 
-hmm. And currently, only 11% of our revenue originates in the US. So part of our sales strategy is to work both directly and indirectly via our partner program uh, to raise the brand awareness and to expand our business in the US. And we're very excited about that. So whilst we've got um, good targets, you know, quite aggressive targets for the next three years, if we get the marketing campaigns uh, you know, and approach the US market correctly, then actually they're probably, you know, we've, it, it, it should be um, a great return okay. because we've been quite conservative, I guess, in terms of looking at what the addressable market is for the US and what our share might be for that. Sure. I We talked to quite a few tech companies and they all want to crack the, the US market. Yes. And the, co- the common theme seems to be through through partnerships, uh, people yeah. on the ground. So, I mean, how developed is your partnership is it, to get you? Yeah, get, so we have um, a partner manager that's been with us for well over a year now. And she's been working on both uh, uh, developing the relationships with our UK partners, but also... Uh, bringing on new partners in the US. And so I think we've had four partners signed this year with quite large cybersecurity ratings um, businesses, for example. Uh, They will be able to resell stream. We've been through the um, process of sales enablement, enablement, so Mm -hmm. uh, ensuring that their sales teams understand what value stream adds in the sort of ecosystem of solutions that they're working with. Um, and so all of that has taken place over the summer. So we should be starting to see the rewards. And what we're doing is working with partners that have global coverage. So we've got some great partners that we've been working with in the UK. We've talked about them on the podcast before. They have you know, American divisions as well. So we're mm-hmm. expanding the use of our tried and trusted partners that we've mm-hmm. been working with in Europe to their, to their US um, operations as well. And, and in terms of the client you're going after, I mean, I'm sure you you won't turn down any business. But I mean, you, you mentioned the the, the the you can't mention the name. I appreciate that, but you mentioned a, a big logo, and there was also another a contract announced earlier in the year. Again, it was it was not named, but it was a big or government department, I believe. I think you you said. Yes. So, I mean, yeah. how important will you be going after these other, sort of big ticket or or big um, big named companies as a priority? Um, so our we will be go, we will we target customers that work in a heavily regulated environment. Okay. So it's probably you know organisations from sort of a thousand employees upwards, but we're not going to turn away organisations that are smaller than that. But sure. we do particularly well when they are in a heavily regulated environment. So finance, defence, manufacturing telecoms, utilities, places where they need to be able to demonstrate legally defensible data, we, you know, we work very well and particularly successful with them. So that will be the business uh, verticals, I guess, that we're, we are targeting. It's, it often works well to go in with a specific, to work with an organisation on a particular use case and then grow the business from there. So if we okay. talk about the client that we announced this week, we could have spent weeks and months, you know, and possibly longer than that, talking, you know, business enterprise wide with them. Uh, but if we t- if we solve a particular challenge for them in a particular use case, that will help expand the use within that organization. And and, that, and we'll probably, you'll probably see return on that much more rapidly. Okay. Um, so we we do, we, we're not, we don't shy away from the large public sector tenders or the large, you know, global enterprise tenders. But we find um, that, you know, in terms of a route to market, working where there is a specific need and a specific challenge that needs to be solved, a good way to start working with those larger organisations. Okay, okay. And would you perhaps look to use some of these as a case study to help you in the future? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So um, you will find because of that, I suppose, because of the compliance nature of what we do, uh you know, 90% of our customers will ask for that anonymity. But over mm-hmm. time, mm-hmm. where we've been yeah. working mm-hmm. with them very well and that relationship becomes much more of a partnership, then we're able to publish case studies in terms of the problem that we solved for those organizations. And, you know, they will work, they'll either allow us to publish those on our, you know, in our mm-hmm. marketing collateral or they will speak with us at conferences and so on. So, yes, 
we intend to be able to do that. You know, for the ones that we've talked about in the last two or three months, we should be able to do that in, a, you know, six months to a year from now. Okay, well, thank you. There's a lot of good information there. If I was just to perhaps ask a final thought on your ambitions as CEO of Acuity here, what you want to achieve. Obviously, one of them, I would say, is cracking the US market. I would assume as well, continuing to grow sales in the United Kingdom. Europe, maybe you want to branch out uh, you know, to Europe or other global markets, but maybe you can tell, tell us what, uh, what you want to achieve. Yeah, I mean, I don't have small ambitions, Mark. So my, <laughs> my ambition is to have Acuity positioned as what I would call the number one um, enterprise assurance management software. So not across siloed risk. It just provides assurance for the organization that your enterprise is fit for purpose, your risks have all been considered, uh, and I would like to see Acuity considered as, I suppose, the number one trusted partner in that space. So not just a supplier that wants to sell software, but a supplier that you can trust to deliver on that kind of solution. Okay. So well, not a small ambition. But, not a small you know. ambition, but a, a nice, uh, nice way to, to Let's finish. talk in three years. <laughs> Well, we'll let's see how well, close. We will talk in between those three years. I'm in between sure, that time, as... but let's check back on that soundbite. <laughs> Indeed. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Kerry Chambers, CEO of Acuity Risk Management. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you for tolerating my cough. <laughs> if you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.